Hey, what's up? John Sonmez from simpleprogrammer.com. So I got this question about online whiteboards. I did a video on whiteboard coding interviews that you can check out here, but this one is about online ones. I thought I'd answer this. Uh, similar answer, but I think it's slightly different here. So I got this email and he says, uh, I hope you are well. I want to know what are your thoughts on these that I call online whiteboard sites like HackerRank or Codility? Uh, do you think they're a solid and proper way to find good developers? When I'm applying for some companies, a lot of those companies send me these tests and worse, you have little time to complete them. One company sent me a HackerRank test with a timer of 40 minutes and five algorithm questions. One of the algorithm questions was to implement a binary tree using X, Y, and Z. That's nearly impossible to solve if you don't know the answer previously. It's not like that in a real world. Uh, why do companies insist in using this approach to hire developers? If you're going to answer this question in a video, please keep it anonymous. Okay, well, it's anonymous. <laughs> but, um, okay, so here's the thing. The biggest fear that a company has is hiring a developer who actually can't code. And I know this sounds silly, but a lot, I have sat at the interview table and I, trust me, I have interviewed developers that actually had multiple jobs on their resume that you could verify that they actually got paid as a software developer, some in senior positions, some in architect positions. And when I asked them a simple coding problem, or I could, they couldn't code. They could not write code. I don't know how they got by. Maybe they're just fixing bugs or whatever they did. But that's the biggest fear that you have hiring a developer because that's an expensive hire, and sometimes it's hard to get rid of people. Or and, and so and, and sometimes you don't even know because they could bring down that whole entire team. There's there's some people that are such a negative asset, especially a developer who can't code. So. That's one of the reasons why I'm actually for doing these online coding tests because I think it's a good filter. Now, here's the problem. This is what people get upset about. They're like, oh, it's not like the real world. We don't have to solve like these coding problems on a whiteboard in a time test in the real world. That's not how it works. True, but, if, but it's a filter, right? If, if you can do that, if you're the kind of developer that can actually pass those tests, then you're probably really good. And so when you get a thousand people apply for a job, if you can have a really good filter, right, you're going to lose some of the good people, but that's fine. You don't care because you have enough to choose from that you, you and, and, and you never want to make a mistake, right? The worst thing as an entrepreneur, I can tell you right now, the worst possible mistake that, that you can make as an entrepreneur is to hire the wrong person. That's the worst possible mistake. It will sink you like nothing else. So. If you're, if you're risk adverse, if you're trying to not make the worst mistake possible, which is hiring the wrong person, and you have a lot of people and you're trying to have come up with a really good filter, a really hard test is a good one. Because you know, you like I said, some of the people that, that you're gonna filter out that can't pass the interview, that the, the coding test, they might be good developers and might have actually been good on your team. But you know that the people that that do pass it, that they actually can code and they're, they're skilled developers. And they probably have invested time in honing their craft and learning about these kind of tests and actually enjoy maybe even doing these type of things. So there's, it doesn't mean that they're an instant hire, but it's a really good filter. At that point, you still have to interview them. So, so here's my advice to you. Get good at this stuff. It's not very hard. There's a book that I always recommend, you know, uh, even though it does better than my book on Amazon, Cracking the Coding Interview, right? That's a, that's a good book. Uh, you know, before then, I, I had talked about, you know, I, I became a good developer when I started doing top coder competitions, learning these algorithms. You know, you, you just go through that book and learn how to do those. There's a handful of different algorithms, right? There's, there's a, a set of different algorithms, and if you understand the data structures, a set of data structures, and there's like combinations of them, and there's only so many types of problems. If you can solve these kinds of algorithm problems, not only will you become a better developer, you'll interview better, right? And you'll always pass those tests and you'll never be nervous about them. So why not do this? You know, devote a couple of months of your life 
to, to gaining this skill and it's gonna benefit you for the rest of your career. So do this, you know, and if you're not willing to do this, then, and you're like, well, screw you. I don't have to prove anything to you. I'm, I'm a good developer. I don't, I'm not gonna do your test. Well, then you're exactly the kind of developer I wouldn't hire. I, I wanna hire people that are eager, that will do what it takes, that are willing to go above and beyond. And so maybe that's the filter that they're filtering against. So anyway, no offense to you. I don't mean to, you know, uh, to offend you, but I'm, but I'm just telling you the truth. This is how it is. This is what reality is, right? You know, I did this video about looking in the mirror and facing reality. It's important that we face reality. The reality of the situation is companies are doing this. You might not like it. You might not think it's valuable, but they're doing it. So you can either get angry about it and fold your arms and be like, you know, screw you guys, or you can actually do, you know, conform to reality and actually be able to pass these tests and, and be the best at these tests. So, you know, it, it's to, to some degree, it's a good thing because it means that you, if, if you are willing to devote the time to get good at this kind of thing, you have less competition. They've weeded out the competition for you. So why would you not get good at this? It doesn't make sense to me why you, why someone would fight this. So anyway, Hopefully that sort of explains the situation for you and gives you something that you can do. Uh, if you have a question for me, email me at john at simpleprogrammer.com. And if you like this video, subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you next time. Take care.